DJ. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good night to the people of Newcastle. Well, you know, the system sounds so good, so I can almost say good night to the people of Nisbet Settlement all the way up to the top of Shaw's Road. Over into camps and up in Scarborough. I believe we are going all the way up into Fountain and Mount Lily. So let me say good night to the whole of St. James. Let me also say good night to the whole of Nevis. And all those who are listening and viewing via YouTube, Facebook, all of the platforms that we are carrying this meeting through. Von Radio as well. So you know we are being captured far and wide today. Or this evening. I want to say to you that it's good to be here once again. The last time we came, it was during the federal campaign. So we are here tonight once again to seek your support here in Newcastle. Seek your support here in St. James and seek the support of the entire neighbors for the Concerned Citizens Movement. But let me just say at this point in time, thanks to all who came prior to me. And whoever would have given me some endorsement tonight. It sounds good, you know. I wonder if all of that are true. Oh, I was just checking. True fact. True fact because the CCM and this platform has always been about the truth. And let me say further, the CCM party is a party that has always been truthful to the people of Nevis. We don't bend buckle now. Bow to any pressure. We don't mislead the people of Nevis in any way. Because we always feel, if we do so, the day of reckoning will come. When the people of Nevis will turn their back on this party. And we don't want that. So we have always had this mantra that people have to be placed first in everything that we do. People matter most. And that is why we have placed people front and center in the development of this island. And so the CCM party has come back again. We have come back to Newcastle because, you know, Newcastle has always been good to the Concerned Citizens Movement. And the Concerned Citizens Movement have reciprocated that support and have done marvelous things here in, in Newcastle and St. James. And we want to thank the people of Newcastle, thank the people of St. James, and thank the people of Nevis. I don't want to just be specific to Newcastle, even though we are here. Because, you know, when we sit and we plan, the whole of Nevis is placed in our plans. But I want to say to you tonight that I want to put my record before you. Because when I rolled up my sleeves and said that I want to represent the people of St. James, after the Honorable Nurse Jane Harris would have hanged up her boots. I wonder if I should say boots or heels. Either which way, because Nurse Jane was a... A champion in many ways. But when she said she was done with active politics, I rolled up my sleeve and I say, I am ready to work for the people of St. James. I am ready to work for the people of Nevis. And that is what I've done. You know, and the good thing I can tell you, you know, as much as they're talking, you know, they can't question my record as a minister. They can't question my record as a representative. And I hear all of us been saying on this platform that the NRP have been disrespecting the people of Nevis and saying nothing is happening in Nevis. I don't even want to say that no more. We have been saying all along that something good is happening in Nevis. Our record has demonstrated that many good things have happened in Nevis. So we shouldn't be bothering with the NRP because we know they are a disrespectful party. They are a deceitful party as well. Because there's no way you can traverse the whole of Nevis and see good things happening all up and down Nevis and say nothing is happening. That is a disrespect to all of the persons who continue to work morning, noon, and night, who work Monday down to Saturday, Sunday, who work every month and every year to build this island. And you're going to tell them that their efforts are for naught. Nothing you're doing, they're saying. That is the NRP for you. You tell me the young men, them who build this road, those young men who work for public work, the engineers, the supervisors, the persons who did the curbs all up and down this road, they were done by hand. So you tell me nothing was done. 
And you know who is leading that cause and that chorus? The leader of the NRP. When this road was being built, I don't even think that she saw it. I don't think so. Because if she saw it, she would never say nothing uh, happened in your castle or in navies. But I don't want to spend no time on her, you know, because, you know, I have heard the NRP say nothing happened in Navis and nothing good is happening. But I saw something down here at Owali this afternoon. And I understand when they planned that activity, they said they'll put it close to the Owali water taxi because people were coming over from St. Kitts. They sent invitation over there for people to come over. And you know what they told them? When you all come, we'll be right next to the Owali water taxi facility. So you just have to walk across. So you see how important that facility is? They're using all of the infrastructure that we have been building in this island. They're enjoying all of the amenities that are, that are associated with this infrastructural development. And yet still, nothing is happening, but I'm here to say something good is happening in this island. Something good is happening because I want to say to you that that Uali Water Taxi Facility when we sat down and thought about it and had the vision to construct it, that was not the initial place that one was to be built. There was an application for one to be built down at the bottom of cotton ground. A single individual associated with the NRP wanted to build a facility there and it was going to be owned and operated by one single individual. That one individual would have owned all of the water taxi boats. They would have operated them, employed persons. They would have collected all of the revenue down there. When we sat as a cabinet, we said, it cannot be similar to what goes on at the Seabridge. At the Seabridge, you have had one operator since 2007. One person making money, one entity. No other person have ever gone into that business. But a visionary government said, no. We have to make it open to every and any man, woman, even if a young child wants to start a business, they can do that. If they have the backing and they have the money. So we said we'll build that water taxi facility. We'll open it up to all those in Nevis who want to take part or take advantage. And look what we have seen. We have seen multiple operators down there who are all 100% divisions. They employ divisions. They pay them a wage or a salary. They pay taxes. They buy supplies right here on the island of Davis, whether it's fuel, oil, and the likes. They spend money. Some money is circulating every single day at that facility. The last time the Premier re reported, he said 132,000 people thus far has passed through that facility. This year alone. It is big business, but it is a business that is being run and operated by NASPA, and they have given the opportunity to all divisions to participate. No one from St. Kitts have a boat that comes there. When someone from St. Kitts want to come to Nevis, or a group want to come to Nevis, they call over to Nevis, they call Island of Water Sport, they call Blue Wave, they call all of the operators and ask them to come to Reggae Beach to pick them up. So that is what you do as a forward-thinking government and give opportunities to your people. Multiple people are taking advantage. And that is why I'm so pleased with that development. So when we heard them saying, oh, where is $6 million gone? Lord of mercy, when I heard that, I said, warm to these people. There's an eye clinic that is held up there at the hospital twice a year. April and November, I want the whole of NRP, all the candidates to go up there and have the eyes check. Go and have your eyes checked because one thing I can say to you, that even Stevie Wonder might walk on that pier and say, oh, what a beautiful pier. What a beautiful oh, pier. No. But the $6 million that was spent, we spent just about $3.8 million to buy that property. Easy dollars, that is. Another $1.6 million was spent, easy that is, to build the pier. We fenced it up. We did all of the security work down there. We have spent just about $5.8 million. And then we're spending just about another $640,000 to 
to build the reception area where all of the ticket boats will be. So we have done well in terms of managing the monies that we receive to build that facility. We said it will cost us $6 million and we have spent just about that. And that is why I said some time ago, when people talk about corruption, you have to prove corruption. And when I say prove it, bring the facts to prove what you're talking about. And I said to the leader of the NRP and the NRP, instead of talking about where the $6 million has gone, bring a design of a peer. Bring the cost into your peer. Bring it and tell us you could have done it for far less than what we have done it for. Then you'll start talking about corruption like that. That's what you do. You just don't talk and throw the word corruption out there and think that it sounds good. When you look at the CCM, point to the evidence of corruption in the CCM. But I will say to you here in Newcastle that we point to the corruption that existed in NRP. We brought it to the general public. And as a matter of fact, a quote right here in Nevis would have adjudicated on corruption in the electoral process. And when it was all said and done, a member of the NRP, Hensel Daniel, his seat was adjudicated to be null and void. That is evidence. When they take or they took over 200 persons' names off of the voters' list. People who were walking the streets of Charleston, if they didn't say hello or good morning to anyone in the NRP, if they didn't say hello to Joseph Parry, good morning to Hensley, good morning to whomever in the NRP, they go up by the electoral office. Oh, no! That is what it appeared as. as. Once you didn't, they didn't like you, and you didn't like them, they take off your name. I never see more nonsense in my life. Even someone who said was dead. Someone who they claim was dead. Who showed up in court and said, here I am. They took off that lady's name. So that is what you call corruption. And the court agreed with the CCM party. The Honorable Mark Brantley took the matter to court. And he prevailed. So when you talk corruption, Lord, I you bring the evidence. Bring the evidence. Because when we sit as a party in government, we have always been told by the Honorable Van Sembury of blessed memory, listen, keep your all hands clean. Be above board with what you do. And Mark Brantley, as the leader of the CCM party, has come along and he has proven that he has learned well from the Honorable Van Sembury. I have proven that I've learned from the Honorable Van Sembury. Eric has shown that. Spencer Brand has shown that. All of the persons in cabinet and those who have put ourselves up for re-election, we have proven that we have kept, kept our promise to the people to represent and to keep our hands clean. So, let me move on from there because when it's all said and done, I want to say to the people of Nevis that this party have performed we have performed since 2017, but we have been in government since 2013. But I will say to you, we are now putting our records of the last five years before you. And we have always said that we are not a party of excuses. But indeed, in 2020, we had some challenges in this island brought on by COVID-19. You think we made any excuses? No. We came up with all of the necessary plans and programs to make sure that the lives of the people of Nevis was protected and the livelihood would be there for you to benefit. And so Nevis is in good hands. Good hands with the CCM. Good hands under the leadership of Mark Brantley. Good hands <laughs> under the leadership of Alexis Jeffers right here in St. James. And I'm going to tell you what I've done here in St. James just now. Because I am proud, I just talked about the Uwali Water Taxi Facility. You see the road from Cliff Dwellers heading up here to St. James is now being resurfaced. I will tell you, I sat in cabinet and I told my colleagues, listen, before the next election comes, they have to start. We won't finish it because many things happened prior where we had to get the financing. But of course, I can stand here to you to, in front of you tonight and said because of my efforts, because of my admonition, we were able to get that road started. <laughs> I want to thank Spencer Brand as well because he was the one who spearheaded that effort. When he came to cabinet, we told him to get the financing in place. 
get the company that is needed to reconstruct that road in place. He went and he did that work and brought it back to cabinet and got the stamp of approval of the cabinet. And very shortly, you'll be driving on a very smooth surface coming from all the way down in cotton ground, all the way up here to Newcastle. And I know many of you would have had challenges because, of course, those were terrible roads. There's no if, no, but, or maybe about that. And many of you may have had some expenses, but relief is coming. A new surface will be laid, and you will have a comfortable drive coming from Charleston all the way to the north to St. James. But not only that, I want to move on and tell you that I spoke about Shaw's Road already. We'll move on from Shaw's Road, but I'm certain I heard Spencer Brand talk about that police station. And everything good that has happened in Nevis, the NRP has criticized it. I have said a mature party, mature leadership will say, in opposition, and you see the government do something good on behalf of the island, you will say, good job. We have done so in opposition. We have commended the NRP in opposition. But if we are waiting for the NRP to commend us, well, we'll be waiting a very long time. So I'm not even going to worry about them. All I'll say to you is that in 2013, when I got into the cabinet of the Navy Island administration, I told them, all of my colleagues, I made a commitment to the policemen and women who were there at the police station at the time that I will ensure that their environment will be improved and enhanced. The construction of the police station is not the NIA's job to do. It is not for us, it's a federal matter. But we couldn't sit and wait for the federal government to come on board. I would tell you at the point in time when we made the decision, there were two police stations that were donated to the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis by the government and people of Mexico. Both police stations were built in St. Kitts. The understanding I had then was two more were coming to the Federation. But somewhere along the line, that got derailed. I said we couldn't wait. I sent a proposal to the federal government to build a brand new police station. Up to today, I haven't heard a thing. But we just couldn't wait. Because as we were waiting, the situation was getting worse and worse there. So in 2016, we decided we are taking those policemen out, break down the police station, started our rebuilding process. We got a mortgage from First Caribbean Bank, and we started the process. Well, I want to commend the federal government because after we were in full flight, they came on board. But it was because of the Nevis Island administration and their commitment to the police, commitment to the safety and security of this very constituency and the island of Nevis, we decided we were forging ahead to rebuild that police station. What a wonderful edifice, so what a wonderful structure. And you know where it is? It's in Newcastle. It's in St. James. One of the best in the OECS. So you travel the OECS and you look at police station. And when you come back to Nevis, you say, well, the best police station in the OECS is right here in Newcastle. <laughs> Right here in Newcastle, and the reason why that had to be reconstructed, imagine as the representative of St. James, I go over there and tear down that police station, the old one that was there, and never rebuild one. Well, the people of Newcastle would tell me, they're not voting for me there. That's, that would have been their reply to me. Because it has been there since 1970 or before, a police station that is. So how can I come along as a representative, see something need rebuilding, replacing, and do not do that? So I am proud that I was able to bring that accomplishment and that particular structure back to Newcastle. So as it is, the people of Newcastle can be proud when they travels that area. And I'll say to you, as part of the road enhancement work that will be done from right here at the bottom of Shaw's Road up to beyond Nisbet, plantation in front of that particular police station. The road will be improved. It will be raised. Drainage put in place. A brand new bridge will be built right there next to June France. You know the amount of water that come down be from behind of the police station. 
So that bridge will be built to ensure we have safety and security there. We are building resilience right in front of the police station. We are making sure that 50 years and beyond, the infrastructure will be able to hold up and carry the volume of water that comes down to the back of the police station down to the ocean. So that is what we'll be doing there. So infrastructural development will come. I want to go up to the VOJN sporting facility. And you know why I talk about it all the time? In 2006, under the Honorable Nurse Jane Harris, that facility started construction then. Unfortunately, the CCM left government. And the NRP came along and they said, what? They said they now do a thing to it. And they never touch it. They never touched it. But I made a commitment in 2013 to all of the young men who normally go there to play cricket, football and the likes that I will make it my duty and responsibility to rebuild, not rebuild, but finish that facility and also enhance it to the point where you can use it morning, noon, and night. So you go up there. You have a brand new pavilion. You have a bathroom outside for persons to use. You have a brand new surface. The field is nice, nicely laid. You have lighting. You have a fencing of the entire perimeter. The place is like a first-class facility. And why I say it's a first-class facility, the St. Kitts Nevis Patriots, you all know them, that team from St. Kitts that plays in the CPL. They have come there to practice. They have come there to play. They love the facility. As a matter of fact, I do believe if we can get them there just for practicing sake, they'll come. But they have come there a number of occasions. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes have come there to practice as well. So we have had some international stars that have come to that facility. As a matter of fact, almost every Sunday cricket is played. And when you have a major finals, it is played right here in St. James. Who would have thought about people leaving Charlestown? Leaving Grove Park to come to St. James in the north, up at VOJ and Sporting Facility for a major finals. In the past, we used to traverse and go all the way to Charlestown for such things but you're coming right here to the Viogens facility. But we're not done yet. We're not done yet because we're going to rebuild the football, not the football, the baseball. Oh my goodness, I'm thinking baseball now. Maybe I want to bring baseball up there too. But it's basketball. Court. I love baseball, so maybe that's why. The basketball court, the netball court, and we'll add a tennis court as well right up there to make that a comprehensive complex. Good things will be happening up there. Because we are doing this so that our young men and young women can get some form of recreation at any point of the day. Keep themselves fit. Keep themselves healthy so that they can be productive citizens. Once you are fit and healthy, your brain will be as healthy and fit as well. And that's what we are going to do up there at VOGN. If I go beyond VOGN, Spencer spoke about it, but I am the one who would speak about it too, because I am the one who was responsible for bringing University Heights. University Heights, ladies and gentlemen, was conceptualized to ensure that we are keeping our brightest and our best right here in Nevis. We all know when persons go to university or four-year colleges and come back to Nevis, and they have challenges to secure home or to secure land, many of them get frustrated and decide, they live in Nevis. We are saying to our young men and young women, we want them to stay here and participate in the development of the island of Nevis. And so we have offered these incentives. Concessionary, concessionary price on land, $1 per square foot, and a home, a house that is, for just about $340,000. Most of them have a mortgage payment of just about $1,500 to $1,800. And we have structured it in such a way so as to bring that ease to our young people. That is how you think as a government. That is how you plan. And the, your policies must reflect what you're trying to accomplish in terms of ensuring that your citizens are taken care of. So a number of persons have taken advantage. And while I'm up there, I'm going to say that we are going to continue with that program up there because we're in the process of buying 36 acres of land right up there at Ghana's. And let me tell you something about Ghana's.
It's one of the most beautiful views you can get anywhere on the island of Nevis. When you're up there, you have a view of the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, Booby Island, you can see down into Frigate Bay, the peninsula. All those areas, you capture that in all in one view. And we want our citizens of St. Kitts and Nevis, but more so Nevis, to buy land up there, to build a home. So at some point, you'll be traversing this area and you see some beautiful homes are down in that landscape. 36 acres of land. And if I were to go through the history of those lands, it would take me all night, but I will say to you that because of the fact that I am the minister of lands and because of the fact that I'm a minister within the Nevis Island administration sitting around the cabinet table, I was able to see and I was privy to the fact that those lands were foreign owned. And we don't have anything against foreigners. But I'll say to you, based on what was to be done with those lands, I told the members of cabinet we should go after those lands, purchase those lands, bring them back on the ownership and, and, and control so that our people can get a piece of the rock. Beautiful lands. And so I am proud of that as well. Not only that, go down to Herbert Beach. There was a land mogul around here. We call it land mogul. Persons who like to buy up land, gobble up land. That was being sold at a price that I feel was... It would have been paid by the person who was going to buy it. The person had money and they were going to buy those lands. But because of the attachment that we as persons in Newcastle and in St. James and the whole of Nevis have to those lands, I said, we have to approach the table and put our offer on the table to buy those lands so that the people of Nevis would not be shut out, cannot be shut out. Because the day they were sold to that person I'm talking about, they would have put up a big high fence and nobody would have been able to go down there. As a matter of fact, we have a festival there every single year for the last 26 or 27 years called Herbert Beach Affair. That and all would have been gone. And when you think about what could have happened and what could have happened under my leadership, I told the cabinet, listen, we have to get those lands. And we were able to acquire those lands. 13.9 acres of land, prime beach land, and we'll put a development plan in place so at least we can go there and enjoy those lands. Right now you can go down there and jump up and stamp up on them. It's your land. It's your land. And that is how you think as a representative because no one prior to me, at least I cannot knock Nurse in Harris because they were not available at that time, but then happy themselves made no effort to ensure those land stays in the hands of the people of Nevis. But we came along and as soon as the opportunity came, as a matter of fact, I'll tell you, some person sat down in front of me in 2013, July of 2013. I was a fresh minister then. And when they sat down there talking about those lands, I tell them, listen, the people of Nevis need those lands. And by 2017, we were able to make the move to get them. And that's what you do as a representative. So I'm proud of that. And what would make me even more proud is when we come up with a development plan to ensure those lands are used in the best possible way to benefit one and all here on the island. But moving right along, housing have been at a talk on this island. I will say to you that the cabinet of the Nevis Island Administration gave me a mandate to build quality homes here on the island of Nevis at an affordable cost. And we have done just that. Cedarview Housing Development is one of the best in the Federation, if not beyond. And I say that with no water in my mouth. And no contradiction there is as well. One of the best housing development, as a matter of fact, persons have come all the way from Barbados and beyond, driven through that development and said it's the best they have seen, ever seen. The road network is nice. The colors are nice. The houses are nice. And you know what? Compared to perhaps Cherry Garden is far less complaints we are hearing. Maybe one in every 30 and there are 60 homes up there. So if I say one in every 30, just about two persons have complained up there about anything to do with the house. 
You go over to Cherry Garden, for example. Let me leave and go over there for one bit. Because when we came into government in 2013, we made complaints about houses over there. We made complaints about the sewer, the sewage system, soak away and the likes. And even up until today, we are still getting complaints. Even up until today, we are still uh, uh, rectifying some of those issues over there. As a matter of fact, more than 60 to 70% of the houses over there had issues and difficulties. And we had to self-solve those as a government. So we said moving forward, when persons invest in their homes, they spend hard-earned money, we have to give them a house which of a high quality, high standard, and something that they can be proud of when it's all said and done. And that's what you do as a good forward-thinking government. Because people have to work hard. And if you want them to have their pride, that pride in their home, you have to give them something of quality. And that's what the CCM have done. CCM is a quality party, you know. We are a quality party. We have quality people, supporters, and all quality. And so we produce quality at all times. Not only that, let's move up to Butler's. Lord, when I drive through Butler's, I say Butler's have been transformed. Butlers have been transformed under your CCM and under my leadership. And I want to say to the people of Butlers, be proud of your infrastructural development. Nice walls. And people may criticize your walls, but listen, you deserve it. You have waited for some time for your road to be reconstructed. And anyone who comes in here to vote in the upcoming election and drive on those roads or walk those roads, they would walk right into the polling station and say, let me vote for CCM. Okay, if they're happy, bring them. They're going to vote for CCM just because of that road, just because their property value have been enhanced and their environment have been improved. They will do that. But ladies and gentlemen, we can talk all night about what we have done in the past. We also have to talk about what we'll do in the future. And I've said before and I'll say it tonight again and I'll keep saying it. That my aim and my ambition is to leave St. James and leave the island of Davis better than I met it in 2013. And if you have that type of mentality and thinking, I am saying to you tonight that we'll accomplish our goals as we move forward. As I stand here tonight and I look at the Van Summer International Airport, this will become a priority for us over the next five years. And it will not take us five years also. We are eager to get started in terms of extending this runway, improving the surface, the lighting, and also acquiring some properties north of this runway. When you look at other islands surrounding us, they may have moved a little bit ahead of us. We were ahead of them, but in development, everyone have different phases in their development. Some get ahead of you, but then you don't sit idly by. You pull up your bootstraps. You roll up your sleeve and say, let's get to work again. Let's continue the work. So we're going to continue the work here and make sure that over the next couple of years, we'll see aircraft landing right here from Miami. American Airlines, that is. You know, there is an American Airlines... American Eagle, that is, that flies into Anguilla and into Dominica. We are seeking to attract that very same aircraft. Oh, what a beauty it would be when we have persons leaving Miami 1 o'clock in the day. By 2.30, they're in Nevis. By 3 o'clock, they're on the beach sipping a daiquiri or rum and coke, whatever they drink. When persons are going on a vacation, they don't want to spend time sitting in airports. We want to bring them directly here. And that is how you develop as an island because you have to be making it easy for persons to have access to your island. And that is why I want the support of all, one and all, to understand that this infrastructural development will bring Nevis to the point where all of us will receive the benefit. The residual benefit will be there for all of us. Whether it's in the hotel sector, whether it's in the restaurant business, whether it's in taxi operation, whether it's in car rental, all of the areas and all of the areas that are connected to the tourism industry, you will be impacted positively with the reconstruction of this airport. Not only that, I have said before and I'll say again that these two primary schools that we have in St. James, 
we have to continue to seek to grow the student body or the student population over the years to come. How we'll do that? We'll build a daycare and preschool right here in St. James, government owned and operated. Premier, I hope you're hearing me. Because I'm already seeking out lands to do that. And I believe right up here in camps we'll get that done. Why is it important? Why is it important? Once you build a daycare and a preschool right here in St. James, the children from this area will go right there. When they're done there, they'll go into the two primary schools here. Either St. James or up there at Viogen. Currently, currently we have a preschool right here at the Franklin Brown Community Center. There is a limitation on the capacity. Only 20 students can go there. So what that means, if you have an excess of 20, you have 40 children, the next 20 will find themselves somewhere on the island. And if they do that, that's where they'll end up perhaps going to school. We are saying we want them to go to school right here. To build a talent pool in both schools. I want Viogen and St. James to compete with all of the larger schools here on the island. As a matter of fact, we have demonstrated just recently, the St. James Primary School have demonstrated that even though we are small, once the talent is there, we can compete. We went right to the primary school football finals. Right to this, the primary school football finals. Unfortunately, the St. James Primary School didn't win, but they must be commended because they took down all of the giants before, but they weren't able to take down Goliath in the end. It was a David and Goliath situation. But that being said, the more talent you have in these schools, the more competitive they'll be at inter-school primary. When you have spelling bee competition, quizzes, or any other competition, among the primary school, we'll be able to compete. And that's how you build communities, resilient communities, sustainable communities. And you have to be thinking way down the road. And that's why we'll make that a major plank of our development for the next term. I want to say as well that one of the things that I also want to do in healthcare is to build a polyclinic right up there at Potworks. Might sound like a big word, but it is something that is more advanced than one of the community health centers that we have here. At a polyclinic, you're going to have things like a laboratory, a pharmacy, radiology can be done. All of the services that are offered at the hospital can be done there on a smaller scale. But the importance of having it over here, someone needs these services, don't have to go to Alexandra. As a matter of fact, we have ambulances. I heard one going up the road here earlier today. We'll have ambulance services there as well too. So if something happens over here, it will take minutes. When I say minutes, maybe five minutes, ten minutes as against it. 25 minutes or half an hour to come from Charlestown. So you take half an hour to come and half an hour to go back. But you can stabilize a patient right here. And when it's all said and done, if you have to transfer them to Alexandria, you do that. But St. James must be developed to the point where we can say eventually, as I always jokingly say, one of these days St. James will secede from Nevis. I say it all along because we're going to have all of the amenities over here. But that is just a joke. It can't happen. It won't happen. But what I'm saying to you is that we'll build St. James to the point where all of the amenities in Charleston will be available out here. As the population grows, as people come into the area, they'll be comfortable in the area and they don't have to drive all the way to Charleston for everything. So that's how you think as a representative and I want my other colleagues to get jealous too, you know. Because if we can duplicate all this throughout Nevis, well, Nevis will be one of the finest destinations on earth. I always say when I travel and I stand up to say I am from Nevis, I say I am from Nevis, yes. And my island is the closest thing to paradise and the nearest thing to heaven. And I mean that every time I say it. Because in this party, all of us have a love and a passion for this island. We'll never call it down. We'll never say nothing negative about it. Our job is to build it up and move it forward so that, as I said before, we can leave it better than we met it. That's what we'll do as a party. But ladies and gentlemen, an election is coming. 
An election is coming and we are coming to you and we are asking you for your overwhelming support. Some may say we don't have to campaign the length and breadth of Davis, but we are going to campaign. And I want to say to you tonight that I want you to go out early when the time comes. I want you to say to yourself, early out, keep NRP out. Early out, we're going to keep NRP out. NRP is bad for Davis. NRP has called on the island of Davis. No matter how they change the name, they could call themselves NRP, the new NRP, the new new NRP. They could call themselves the revamp NRP. It's the same old NRP. And all the negativity you're hearing coming from the NRP, they're living up to their true colors. Their true colors. Because if you hear them say that nothing is happening in Nevis, if they call on the electoral process, they call on everything in Nevis, it tells you that they don't have any love and any passion for this island at all. And as such, you should leave them where they are. You remember the days when they had this radio station? What do they call them? Well, it wasn't my choice anyway. It wasn't my choice of radio station. You must know where I'm going. It wasn't my choice, but morning, noon, and night, they used to cuss everybody in this SCM. In this SCM. They used to cuss ma, cuss me, cuss everybody. They had breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything they used to cuss, cuss. But you know the interesting thing? Oh, no. I'm going to tell you all something, you know. When we got into government, you remember that radio station, they owed Nevlek $155,000. Oh, At the no. same time, they were collecting $150,000 every year. I think it was about $12,500 a month they have a contract. For six and a half years, they didn't pay no electricity. They were in such a race that I told the manager then to cut them off. And I'm proud to say that tonight. You mean to tell me that the old man from Stony Grove, the old woman from Hannes Road, the old man from up in, uh, what do you call it, Fountain, the old man from down in Charleston used to walk in the hot sun, go up to Nevlek to pay the $250, the $300, to make sure that they don't get cut off. But that radio station had owed $155,000. And at the same time, was collecting $150,000 a year. Collecting taxpayers' money. Cussing us and not paying their bills. So they went to court when we cut them off. Yeah, they went to court. But you know the interesting thing? We get with money. Within six months, we were able to get the people's money. And so I bring that up to tell you this much. I said before that the same NRP is coming back to you again. The same thinking... There are a number of them who have been out there cussing the CCM for five years on the radio, on the internet. They ain't holding a job for five years and it's not the fault of the CCM. Walk in this island. You may not get a job that you want to do, but you can find work. But they spend five years cussing the CCM, cussing the people of Davis, waiting for a cycle to come around every five years to get a walk. Well, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell the people of Nevis and tell everybody who's listening. The next five years going to come, they're still going to be cussing because they'll still be out there. Looking for work. They want to get back in here. And I'm not talking to no young man and young woman out there because all of them walking. I'm talking to those who know who they are. Every five years they sit and wait for a job. But I want to say to you tonight, I have so much confidence in the people of Nevis. I have confidence in the people of Nevis. One... That is down in Charleston where Spencer Brand is running. Spencer Brand has put his record before the people of St. Paul's. And the people of St. Paul's will vote for Spencer Brand. This time around they're saying they don't want a Rere and a Rara in a no government in the Nevis. So Spencer is going to be a decent man going to win his seat down there in Nevis 1. In Nevis 2, the Premier of Nevis, the Honorable Mark Brantley, no matter where you send him, locally, regionally, or internationally, he has proven that he can represent and represent well. He has represented the people of, of St. John's. And the people of St. John's know in Mark Brantley, they have a true leader. They have someone who is caring, we voted for someone who is passionate. Oh, the DJ helping me to spread We voted for Mark now, Brantley and his CCS. Thank you, DJ. Well, I ain't got to say no more about Mark. You hear they say we voted for Mark now. So that's Mark Brantley. That's number two. Up in number three, we have 
The Honorable Eric Evelyn. They call him the dancing minister. But you know what? I love Eric. Why? He's a naturalist. He do what he does best. The man is a naturalist. And no matter what they say, they ain't going to stop him from being himself. So because he has been himself, the people of Gingerland has always rallied with Eric. Even before politics, he has been there. And they're going to continue to rally with him now. Because they take up a guy from Barnsgut. And he can't get some assault. However, he get up in rally and say running up there. Nobody in Gingerland want to take on Eric. So they find somebody who they want to put in the fire. Somebody who is al allergic to work, allergic to, to paying bills. You want them there in government? Never. They were the bees right them. Anyway, that is set. In number three, Eric Evelyn. In number five. All the way with LBJ, I've had a chance to work with Latoya over the federal elections. And up until recently, we have been rubbing shoulders together, talking to one another. I've been giving her the encouragement. She has been giving me encouragement. And she has been saying she wants to be in cabinet with us. Eric and I have been debating where she's going to sit. She'll sit between the two of us, period. Because when she needs some assistance, I'll tell her. Eric will tell her. We're going to bring her along. But the reason why I bring up all this is because the people of St. Thomas is must understand. All of us who have been elected, we are elected to serve the entire island of Nevis. But once you are elected by your constituency, you are expected to put the affairs of your constituency first and foremost in your plans and program. So when roads are to be done, you have to agi agitate for that. When houses are to be built, you as the representative have to agitate and bring that forward. When social programs need to be put in place, you as the representative have to do that. So even though you have a ministerial position, agriculture, health, whatever, your first love should be to your constituents. So I'm saying to the people of St. Thomas Parish, you have voted for people to go into opposition over the years and they have not been able to do anything for you. When Joseph Parry became the elected representative in 2006, he went up and down St. Thomas's and did many things. That's what a representative does. I give him credit for that. So that is why I'm saying vote for Lataya because CCM is going to win the election anyway. So what do you do? Put Lataya in opposition? Not Lataya. Put what the other girl name. My name. Anyway, forget that. You can't be voting oh, no. to put people in opposition. You have to vote them into government to work on your behalf. And no matter how they argue against that, no matter how much points they put forward, let me tell you something. During 2006 and 2013, Nurse Jean was in opposition. How much got done? You think Nurse Jean could get things done? No. No, no representative was there. But as soon as I got in in 2013, things started moving forward. So vote for Latai down in Nevis 5. I come back to me now. Alexis Jeffers right up here in the north. Nevis 4. I am saying to you tonight, I love talking on the microphone. I love preaching to you. I don't mind doing it. But my records, my record as a representative speaks for itself. I have done things in Butler's. I've done things in Brick Hill, in camps in Barnaby, up in Fountain, down in Newcastle. I've done things all up and down St. James. I'm not wrong if you want to play the bull, but because we'll drop some bull, but I think. And they're still sweet, you know. It's still sweet. And we're going we're gonna to pull out the bull, but for the campaign still and for the elections to come. Anyway, I'm saying to you that I have put my record before you. I'm running against someone who has been in this constituency for 20 long years. Don't even know who she neighbor is. Don't even know where Charles Rose is because we had a consultation up in Butler's and she don't even know that the government had done this road here. I told Mark one time I asked the lady down on the beach who live in the fifth house on the left hand side of Charles Road going up towards the mountain. Couldn't tell me. Couldn't oh, tell me. No. And when she walk up to you these days, he asks you, who are you? Where are you from? That is what the NRP is bringing to us. And we told you already that there are a lot of suspicious things about that lady. NRP gone to St. Thomas and he can't go down there. No, NRP gone to St. Thomas, they're right down there tonight. We said before he can't go back down there. And you, so, so said, so done. 20 years he haven't gone back. We want representatives who can travel the globe. 
No way is off limit. And I have traveled the globe and I'll continue to travel on your behalf. Because there's no way on earth unless it is somewhere that is restricted. But ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to spend the time now. I want to say to you that you should keep your focus. Your focus is on voting for the CCM, voting for the hammer. And I said before, early out, we're going to keep NRP out. And that is what you're going to do come election day. Take your mother, take your father, take your sister, take your brother, take your uncle, your auntie, take your grandchildren, take everybody with you. And when you come from the polls, think again and see else. See who else you would have missed. Whoever you miss, you go for them. All day, we'll mobilize to get the votes out there. Because we cannot allow the NRP to sit in government again in this island. The record of the past tells me that we ain't want to have a thing to do with NRP. The up and down saying NRP best for Navis, I say NRP is best to keep away from. And that is my simple message for you tonight, right? I want to leave this stage and leave you in the capable hands of the premier and leader of this great party. I will be back to you. And if you have time for us to sit and talk, ask me any questions. I am here for you. And I'll always be there for you. Ladies and gentlemen of the castle, ladies and gentlemen of the CCM party, thank you for listening. Vote and vote in your overwhelming numbers on December 12th. We'll have a grand celebration when it's all said and done. Because you know we know how to party in this CCM party. Thank you very much for listening. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for listening. Go to church tomorrow. Say a prayer for this great party and this island. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Hey, boom!